So we could talk about this potential NVIDIA Titan GPU, four slots, probably over like 600 watts, much faster than a 4090. Or I could also show you guys this coupon code I found for Best Buy. If you're lucky enough to get in one of the drops and they were actually in stock today, tried it out myself, you can get 10% off and that's about $120 on the Founders Edition 4080. It's not a great GPU at $1199, but at $1079, look at this price. It actually becomes not that bad of a value because you're getting much closer to the price of a 7900 XTX and you get all the advantages of a 4080, which isn't a bad GPU. It's just priced really terribly at $1,200. So this code may not work for everybody. I saw it pop up on Reddit and it did work for me when I put it in. You may be lucky, you may be not, but it could be a way to get a good deal on this GPU. We could also talk about the 4070 Ti. That's gonna be coming up very, very shortly. We think right in the beginning of the month. And if you guys like GPU content like this, remember to smash that like button and subscribe so we can reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But first, let's start off with this Titan GPU. This leak came from Moore's Law is dead and while here we don't really do inside leaks we do talk about it and sort of analyze it if it would make sense in the market we analyze the you know financials of it if it makes sense to have a gpu that's that expensive also the performance where it falls in the current market do i think that an nvidia titan gpu above the 4090 makes any sense at all in the current market that we're in while this is a little bit hard to answer i think in a weird way it actually does does. Now, gamers don't need that type of performance. The Titan really should be for content creators who maybe want a lot of VRAM, very fast VRAM. Right now, the 4090 is selling out left and right, partly because it's the most powerful GPU you can buy, and it's amazing for both gamers and content creators. Basically, you don't really know if a gamer is buying it or somebody who's also doing like 3D work or even video editing. A lot of those people, machine learning as well, are using 4090s because they're a lot cheaper than some of Nvidia's much more expensive workstation GPUs, which can cost six, seven thousand dollars and above. So compared to those professional GPUs, the 4090 is actually fairly cheap and there's nothing really in between a 4090 and one of those workstation GPUs in terms of performance and price. So if something like the Titan level GPU came out, which has been missing for a long time now, I think the last Titan that we saw was the RTX Titan, which was gold and pretty expensive, but compared to the GPU pricing now, it doesn't seem so exorbitant if you really go back and compare the pricing. So even though I don't think the NVIDIA Titan is actually coming from Moore's Law is Dead, a couple of things that are interesting. First, it would have potentially dual 16-pin power. This makes sense as the 4090 already seems like it's basically at its max. I mean, the boards can go up to 600 watts. So having a Titan that can maybe go above that, you definitely might need some other type of power solution. And I'm sure after the fiasco with the 4090 adapters burning up, even if it it was user error and really just a couple of people that had that problem. NVIDIA will be very sensitive with what they put on very powerful GPUs just to avoid any type of media snafu like that coming up again. So I would imagine they would try to put the safest type of power possible, especially for a Titan GPU, which would be pushing a ridiculous amount of power. With that great power comes, of course, a lot of cooling responsibilities. And that's why at least the picture here looks like it's going to be a full or slot GPU. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, vip-cdkdeals.com, a Windows 10 Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You wanna go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate. And now let's go back to the video. 4090 has some massive coolers and so does the 4080 because they share a lot of those same cooler designs. Do you need it for the 4080? 
80. In my opinion, not really. I mean, it's overkill. The only downside, I guess, is that it's harder to fit in different cases. But in terms of the TDP, you're only talking about 320 watts on the 4080. On the 4090, however, it's a much, much more powerful GPU with a TDP of 450 watts. And some of them can go up as high as 600 watts technically. So these coolers were certainly designed to deal with a lot of the heat, a lot of the heat dissipation. Now, four slot and having a, maybe some other type of innovation in the cooler itself could help keep this cool. I think since we're kind of used to the 4090 pushing that envelope, it really wouldn't be that big of a stretch to go a little bigger and a little bit more power on something like the Nvidia Titan GPU. Now, would all that power, maybe if it has more CUDA core, maybe faster VRAM, who knows what it would have, would it translate to better gaming performance? Not by very much. What it did have, however, would be maybe improvements in certain workstation class type of technologies that would help maybe specific drivers that were released just on the sort of Titan GPUs. Maybe more VRAM. I don't know if it would have 24 gigabytes like the 4090. I don't think people really need 48 gigabytes unless it's for a professional workstation type of use case. So a lot of things would be wasted on gamer GPUs. It would be better if they released a 4090 Ti if they wanted to make it gamer focused and then maybe leave the Titan with more VRAM or something like that just for that type of crowd. Now, if they released something like that, it may actually take a little bit of the pressure off of the 4080 and 4090. Right now, most professionals that want to save a buck look like they're going for the 4090. That's part of the reason why these things are selling out so much. Even on my own videos, I've had the viewers tell me that it's not only gamers buying these GPUs. Content creators you know, 3D, machine learning. There's a variety of uses for a GPU as powerful as the 4090, and it does have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which is great for rendering. It's great for a lot of stuff, but what if those users, if they had an option above it that's even more powerful, maybe budget isn't a constraint for them as it may be if it was just a gaming GPU and those sales may alleviate some of the pressure that we see on the 4090. One thing is for sure, under $2,000, NVIDIA does not keep the RTX 4090 in stock. As soon as they land, they seem to sell. Not only that, if you check on eBay, some of these 4090s are selling for well over 2,000, maybe as much as 3,000 in some cases. Realistically, Nvidia could definitely price a Titan at at least $29.99, if not closer to $4,000. I don't think it would come in anywhere near what the $4,090 cost, or even like $24.99 or something like that. So there is pricing room in that sort of segment. It wouldn't make sense for gaming, of course. This would be an absolute sort of niche market, but it maybe is a market that would not really want to go to the workstation GPUs, but have a Titan class GPU instead that maybe fulfills their need much better. Even though it's expensive, $4,000 for something like that, if it's for a professional application, it may actually make a lot more sense than if we're talking about gaming GPUs. After all, I think what we're really waiting for are going to be the cheaper GPUs. That's going to be the next one coming up is the 4070 Ti. It's not cheap by any means, but it's certainly going to be the cheapest one that Nvidia has released in quite a while. Going back to the 3090 Ti at 1999 earlier this year, we then of course had the 4080 and the 4090. At 1199 and 1599 respectively, those are very expensive and high-end GPUs. Anybody that's wanted one under a thousand dollars has basically have to go to RTX 3000 or the freshly launched AMD RDNA 3. So early January, we're expecting these 4070 Ti GPUs to be announced and probably released, and that's going to start to heat up the competition under $1,000. We're not sure if the price will be $899 yet, as it was for the 4080 12 gigabyte, which this basically is a canceled version of that, but let's say that it is $899. How does a 4070 Ti look against an $899 7900 XT? Well, AMD hasn't had the best of launches, and even though the 7900 XT may perform close or maybe a little better than the 4070 Ti in some cases, I think since Nvidia has a much bigger control of the overall GPU market, we would see the 4070 Ti sell a lot better than the 7900 XT. The XTX is only $100 more, but that one seems to be sold out a lot more frequently because it's better and it's a better price for performance GPU, and it actually seems to match the 4080. 
80 in a lot of cases. But remember, NVIDIA does have a few advantages going to them, like ray tracing, like maybe, you know, streaming and even content creation overall is better on NVIDIA. Although to be fair, AMD has made a lot of improvements to their current newest generation RDNA 3. It goes without saying, I'm almost more excited to see what happens in that mid-range high-end segment rather than something really high-end like a Titan GPU that although it's pretty cool on paper, it's not really going to be that practical or useful for most people. And at the end of the day, we do have the 4090, which is already very expensive and seems to perform better than anything else that we have in terms of competition, but definitely something to keep an eye on for the future. All right, guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video. And if you guys like GPU content like this, remember to smash that like button and subscribe so we can reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year.